So linear vacuum equation, we have partial u partial t plus a big U partial small u partial x equal to zero. Fourier analysis of the continuous equation, let's, uh, I think we did it in the beginning, we no longer do it here. And uh, we directly do our Fourier analysis to the discretized equation, okay? So, and as we did our first project, we know a more accurate way of discretizing the center of the, uh, the spatial derivative is through the central derivative, right? So that's, what's the order of accuracy of that? It's gonna be second order instead of the first order if you do it in one side, right? So this is equal to zero. And now we expand the UI, uh, just the UI in Fourier series and also discrete Fourier series. Minus n over two and uh, n over two plus one, you had k times e to the j k uh, i delta x. So with this, the left hand side becomes summation of k dui dt times e to the j k i delta x, and this term becomes u still 2 delta x, still summation over k, still u ahead of k, but this becomes different. j k i plus 1 delta x minus e to the j k i minus 1 delta x. Right? So now, this is equal to zero. So again, matching coefficients. This needs to be added to this times this needs to be zero. So dui dt plus big U times U head of K. Oh, let's also expand this to be E of J K I delta X times E to the J K delta X minus E to the minus J K delta X, right? So this is basically extracting, uh, expanding this I plus one and uh, I minus one into exponential of summations, which is equal to the product of exponentials, right? Okay, so now we have e to the j k delta x minus e to the minus j k delta x over 2 delta x equal to 0. Again, we can write this as an ODE equal to minus, in this case, u 2 delta x e to the j k delta x uh, minus e to the minus j k delta x times u k hat. Now, this is no longer a real number. This is a complex number. All right? This is a complex number now. And this complex number, we can write it out. The cosine and cosine actually cancels. We get a 2j of sine of k delta x term divided by 2 delta x, which is equal to j times sine k delta x divided by delta x. Yes? Why do we have an I extra U on it? Uh, oh, it's UK, yeah, sorry. We already expanded UK, right. Yeah, thank you, thank you for correcting me. Yes, uh, yeah, we already expanded. Okay, so, so this is, so this is equal to that, and we need to multiply a minus U onto that. That is the lambda we'll be using. Okay, so can somebody look at this lambda and tell me, can I use forward order on, on this? Can I use the same time integration scheme I used to solve this discretized differential equation? Yes? No? Yes? Well, it's dependent on you, so if you have a constant time set, there's a chance that you might get to the that it depends on you. Remember, I have a j here. Last time, my lambda is purely real. 
This time, my lambda is purely imaginary. Right? So this is my, my lambda for different case. My lambdas are here and here. This is where my lambdas are. And the maximum I can get, because sine can get to 1 and minus 1, the maximum I can get is u over delta x and minus u over delta x. So these are my lambdas. And do you remember where delta t times lambda has to be for forward order to be stable? So this is real of lambda, this is imaginary of lambda. If we multiply by delta t, this will be delta t and delta t. And forward order is stable only on this, right? Minus 1, minus 2. Forward order is only stable over this domain. So we, ha we have an unstable situation if we use forward order for this equation. Okay, you actually expect to get unstable solutions if you use forward order with a central difference discretization of advection scheme, or of advection equation. Is there any part of the analysis that is uh, surprising to you or not clear?